new intercity trains arrive. Premier links easing of restrictions to more testing. Controversial telecommunications tower proposal quashed by council. Council prepares to pitch for $395 million stimulus, 4.6 million in grants handed out to local small business. Tradies license fees to be waived. The shutdown of pubs and clubs offers welcome relief for addicted gamblers. And Terrigal teachers just wanna have fun. Hi, I'm Ross Barry and welcome to Friday Five at Five on the 1st of May, International Workers' Day. Thousands of Central Coast commuters can look forward to a more comfortable train ride to Sydney. The first of the new trains, manufactured in South Korea, have arrived in Australia and are now going through final assembly and testing for deployment on the rail network over coming months. The new trains have a maximum speed of 160 kilometres an hour and feature 2x2 seating, tray tables, mobile device charging points and storage for luggage and bicycles. Parliamentary Secretary for the Central Coast, Adam Kraut, said that work on the, on the rail line and construction of the $300 million maintenance facility at Kangiangi had helped create 1,600 jobs on the coast. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian has called for more COVID-19 testing as she begins the process of lifting restrictions on social and economic activity. Earlier this week, the Premier said that from today, the state would allow a maximum of two adults to visit another household for social or care reasons, with children permitted to accompany them. She also acknowledged many retail outlets and offices were likely to restart normal operations in late May, and it's expected that more, more specific announcements will follow in coming weeks. A key condition of these nascent steps to restart economic activity, however, is more proactive testing for COVID-19. Local Health District is currently testing around 110 people a day, but the government is looking to double this over coming weeks. Terrigal MP Adam Crouch this week encouraged anyone with flu-like symptoms, no matter how mild, to present to one of the testing clinics in either Gosford or Wyong, or the pop-up clinic here in Erina. And as at 8pm on Tuesday, Central Coast Local Health, Health District had recorded 117 confirmed cases of COVID-19, of which 115 have now been released from daily follow-up. Central Coast Council and staff met via Zoom on Monday night. Let's go to David Abrahams now for a wrap on proceedings. Yes, thanks Ross. Um, there was plenty on the agenda for councillors to debate, but as we said earlier in the week, the meeting had an unusually collegiate and cooperative feel. Uh, we had a word with Councillor Kyle McGregor uh, about the meeting and some of the issues on the agenda. Uh, I know from our regular updates with the CEO that Staff are very keen to try and keep as many projects going as they can or to look at additional projects to uh, keep people in work and to keep the work of council progressing. I understand that they would be applying for stimulus. Um, I have seen or heard of some projects that are certainly being applied for. I'm not sure if it's through this fund or through another fund, but I certainly welcome any money that comes to the Central Coast to be spent on good projects that the community want. And I think there's a lot of potential with the stimulus funds there for our council. And the unanimous approval of the motion to stop the tower in Wyoming was a welcome outcome for many locals, among which we spoke with Christy Plunkett. Yeah, us as a community, um, we were ecstatic, especially all of us who have worked very hard for the Central Coast for Safe Technology. Um, you know, it's been a, a long process of, um, you know, meetings, collaborating with community members uh, and creating petitions. So yes, it definitely felt like a win, Alex, that's for sure. There needs to be community consultation on something like this. It can't be just a matter of, um, you know, local governments and telcos, you know, making decisions for the community at large, that there are people who are concerned about um, the safety, the efficacy, uh, the visual impact, especially uh, given that it's in a, an area where families are uh, you know, congregate. Well, we didn't actually end up having to debate the, the motion because all 15 of us agreed to pass it. So it was passed without debate, which is quite unique. That's not something that happens very often. Um, the main sort of actions coming out of the motion are looking at the overall location of this tower as well as others in the region when it comes to these particular proposals. Um, also reviewing the decisions, but particularly noting the community's concern with the petition and the other things and looking at the, the whole thing holistically to see how we can move forward in a way that serves the community interests. In other news, the New South Wales government 
has now handed out $4.6 million to small businesses on the coast. The grants of $10,000 each were paid out to over 460 businesses with turnover of, of at least $75,000 and up to 19 employees and who have suffered a major loss of income as a result of the pandemic. The grants are intended to help businesses cover bills such as utilities, rates, insurances, wages and other such things. Parliamentary Secretary for the Central Coast, Adam Crouch, said Service New South Wales was still working through over 700 applications and invited any business that have not yet applied for the grant to do so. And relief is also in sight for thousands of tradies here on the Central Coast, with an announcement by the New South Wales Government that up to 200,000 licence holders will have their licence fees waived for 12 months. OK, back to you, Ross. Thanks, David. Well, if there's one silver lining to the coronavirus cloud, it's in the area of gambling addiction. The Central Coast has one of the highest gambling addiction rates in Australia, but the closure of pubs and clubs over the past month has given those impacted an opportunity to break the habit. We asked for Liz Niazi from Coast Community Connections, one of the leading health and community service organisations in the region, about what she's seeing on the front line. It's an opportunity for them to just not gamble for a few months. And most of my clients are addicted to gaming machines, to the pokies. So they felt a real relief. Um, obviously it's brought up other stresses. The lockdown has brought up stresses. So they're dealing with all the issues that were underneath the gambling anyway. You know, their sadness, their anger, their stress, their shame. It's been an opportunity for those to look at those emotions that they were really escaping through gambling. Feliz, it's been an amazing effort for Coast Community Connections to stay open during the pandemic yes. um, and provide a service yeah. that's in great need across the community. What exactly does, um, does your organisation do to help people with gambling addiction? Okay, so... Coast Community Connections, first of all, um, works incredibly hard uh, with all members of the community. Gambling Solutions is part of youth, uh, a youth, um, youth, and, youth and counselling service. Um, and we are open to look after individuals that are addicted to gambling, their families or friends that are concerned. I work with couples. I'm a, a couple of family therapists. So we work, we can work the whole family and the couple. Um, we work very non-judgmentally, very sensitively with people. Um, we really regard their their um, their privacy and their confidentiality, and we really help to support them when they make a decision to stop gambling. We really support that decision in any way we can, um, and we have very good results of people uh, reducing their addiction to gambling or giving up gambling altogether. And if you want to speak with someone about gambling, you can call Coast Community Connections on 4344 7992. That's all for this week. Make sure you get your hands on a copy of Coast Community News, issue number 240, hot off the press today, or see the latest of all our stories on our website. And there you can also see a short performance of Wash the Blood Off My Toga from Woi Woi Little Theatre. And we've heard that girls just want to have fun, but this trio of teachers from Terrigal Public School shows that teachers can be fun too. Have a great weekend.